Herod is dead. Tiberius had been living somewhat over two years on the island of Rhodes when in 4 BC, shortly after an eclipse of the moon, which occurred in early April, it was learned that Herod was dead. Old Herod, king of Judea, was no more, 70 years of age. He had been broken, diseased, half maddened with fear. 33 years had passed since he had made that bloody, never-to-be-forgotten entrance into Jerusalem to become king of the Jews. There had been no welcome for him then. There was no mourning for him now that he was gone. It was a long trail of blood that he had left behind him. The last of the many Maccabees to meet death at his command was his own two handsome sons, sons of his beautiful Miriamah, Always Herod had intended that they should be his successors, but of late in his crazy, fear-maddened mind, he had become convinced that they were criminals, slyly plotting to take the, his, their own father's life. Three years later, just before his death, Herod had suddenly grown suspicious of another son by another one of his wives, and it had him done away with also. I would rather be Herod's pig than his son, remarked Augustus when he heard of it. Pork being forbidden meat to the Jews, the pig, at least, he assumed, would have a chance to live. Death by poison had been Herod's all-consuming fear. Not poison, however, but a lingering, loathsome disease eventually brought his life slowly to a close, too slowly for some. There were those among the people who could not wait for him to die before beginning to undo the evils he had done. While he was still breathing, a crowd of wild-eyed young Pharisees, armed with axes and carrying a ladder of rope, climbed up to the gate of the temple to where the Roman eagle had been hung. They tore down the hated bird, symbol of Rome's power, and hacked it to pieces. Ill as he was, Herod rousted himself, had the guilty ones, forty of them, summoned before him as he lay on his couch, and later had them sentenced to death. First he recalled, however, and rather, rather pathetically, all that he had done for the kingdom, the improvements he had made, the help he had given in time of famine, the great temple he had built for the glory of the Lord. Did all that count for nothing? Upon his death, Herod's kingdom was divided among three of his remaining sons, according to his will. Herod Antipatus was made ruler of Galilee and Perea. Herod Philip was to be ruler of the northeast district. Ar Archelaus was to be king in Jerusalem. Before Archelaus could leave for Rome to have the will approved, revolt again Rome broke out in Jerusalem. Various, the Roman governor of Syria, was obliged to rush a legion of soldiers down to Jerusalem in order to quell the uprising. But no sooner had he left than the riots broke out afresh. There were bitter fighting in the temple courts between the Jewish people and the soldiers. Up in Galilee also, Herod's death was, death was followed immediately by rebellion against Rome. Judah, son of that old rebel leader Herod, had executed unlawfully long ago when he, when he was the young governor of Galilee, was now leader of the rebels. <clears throat> Gathering a band of followers, he broke into the arsenal in the city of Sepphoris, where Herod's royal arms were stored, armed his men, and started out to make trouble. Various, the Roman governor, now rushed his soldiers to Galilee to put down the rebellion. As a lesson to the rebels, he set the city of Sepoius on fire, sold the entire population as slaves, and had 2,000 of the rebels crucified, nailed to the cross. People in the nearby villages, such as the little town of Nazareth, only three miles away, would not soon forget the horror of those days. Meanwhile, in Rome, Augustus was considering Herod's last will. He had to settle a dispute between Ar Archelaus and his brother Herod, Antipas, who claimed that instead of being made merely ruler of Galilee, he should have been made king of Judea. Augustus upheld Archelaus, except that he took from him the title of king, calling him only ethnarchic or ruler. There was now no king of the Jews, and there would never be another. But that Jewish people did not, nor could, nor believe, not believe. 
Had they not long been promised a king, a ruler, anointed by God, a descendant of David? Hope for the Messiah, <clears throat> that promised king, flared up again, stronger now than ever before. Fantastic were the stories of how he would drive out the Romans, tread down his enemies, and trample upon them in fury. Incredible were the predictions of his coming, circulated among the fanatic people, frenzied with was their faith. Now, at last, surely the day of the Messiah had come. News of Herod's death and of the rebellion which followed must have reached Tiberius by letters from Varius, the governor, from Augustus, and from his mother Livia. By now, by such means, he must have also learned how well Herod had remembered the emperor, imperial family in his will. Augustus had been left $20 million, and to the Empress Livia, Herod had bequeathed two shiploads of gold and silver, and what was more rare and more highly prized by all the Roman ladies, a large quantity of that shimmering fabric which came from some remote place in far eastern Asia and was called, was called seers or silk. <laughs>